I've done videos triggering NFL fan bases, MLB fan bases, and NBA superstar fan bases, but I've yet to do a video triggering NBA fan bases until now. I have lots of venom saved up for this one, so you should enjoy it unless your team is my target. Atlanta Hawks. The Hawks are never a real threat to win a title, even when they're good. Trading Luka for Trey Young on draft night was a massive mistake. Young puts up nice stats, but his shot selection and defense are atrocious. He isn't a great three-point shooter, and he looks looks like a lollipop that fell onto a rug. He'll never win anything, just like the rest of this irrelevant franchise. Boston Celtics. The Celtics are tied for the most titles in the history of the sport, but the vast majority of those came in the Jim Crow era, so they don't really count. Just one measly title over the last 36 seasons, the same as the Raptors and Cavaliers. Larry Bird wasn't as good as Magic Johnson and is a massively overrated playoff performer. I would slander Bill Russell, but all you racist-ass Celtics fans already did that by breaking into his home and shitting on his bed, among other things. Jason Tatum is just another Paul George, not a superstar. Brooklyn Nets. What a stupid fucking name. The Nets? Seriously? Your entire franchise history is two finals trips led by wife beater slash drunk driver Jason Kidd, largely due to playing in the worst conference in league history. You had one shot to be relevant again in 2021, but fuck that up thanks to Kevin Durant's overgrown feet. Kyrie's bullshit might not trigger you anymore, but I know what will. The fact that the Knicks are one of the worst franchises in sports over the last 25 years, and they still own New York over you. You'll always be second fiddle to a team run by James Dolan. Ouch. Charlotte Hornets. How do I even slander a franchise that has never even made a conference finals? Should I talk about how Kemba Walker was an inefficient elf? Or how Michael Jordan is a horrible owner who does nothing but smoke cigars and gamble recklessly? Oh, I got it. LaMelo Ball is hyped up as a future star when in reality he's an overrated hot dog who doesn't actually make the team better. I would trade him now while he still has value. He's a glorified Jason Williams with a famous family. Chicago Bulls. Bulls fans know better than anybody how badly the team has been run over the last couple decades, so I won't go that route. Instead, let me go after what they hold dearly, which is the 90s. MJ's competition, especially in the finals, was complete dog shit compared to LeBron's. Yes, it was. Don't you talk back to me. MJ was lucky his peak years coincided with all the great teams that owned his ass in the 80s getting old. If MJ had to face the KD Warriors in the finals, he would have retired mid-series. Derrick Rose didn't deserve his MVP, and he also admitted he didn't know what consent was while on trial for sexual assault. So humble. Cleveland Cavaliers. This team's relevance depends entirely on whether or not LeBron James feels like playing for them. I'm not sure insulting LeBron triggers Cavs fans because I don't know if most Cavs fans even like LeBron. I know most do, but there's this weird subsection of Cavs fans who still hate LeBron because he left them twice, even though he's the best player ever and he gave them 11 seasons, and most importantly, the most memorable title in sports history. 2022 was the first time in literal decades this team showed any promise without the king to guide them. But I'm here to tell you Darius Garland and Evan Mobley are not good enough to be the lead dogs on a title team. Your best case scenario is being the Midwest version of the Hawks. Very sad. Dallas Mavericks. Dirk Nowitzki's 2011 title is massively overrated and wouldn't have even happened had LeBron not thrown the series. Dirk was a career playoff loser outside of that one fluke season. Now the team has stumbled into another generational talent in Luka, and I already know they won't win shit with him because he has the ball too much and doesn't play much defense. Mark Cuban holds himself up to be a good guy even though the team's front office history under his watch is full of sexual misconduct. Did you know a 15-year-old girl got abducted at a Mavs game just a few months ago and was found weeks later in a hotel being sex trafficked? What a family-friendly environment. Denver Nuggets. I'm a big Jokic fan, but his two MVPs are some of the most forgettable MVPs in history. He has devalued the award to the point nobody even cares about it anymore. He will never be the best player in the league because defensively he gets picked on in crucial moments like we've seen in the playoffs over the last several years. Let's be real though, not even Denver really gives a shit about the Nuggets. The Nuggets could win the title on the same day as Russell Wilson posting a video about loving Jesus, and Wilson's video would lead to Denver news. Never forget Jamal Murray had premarital sex. Detroit Pistons. The Pistons haven't been good for 15 years, so let's go back in time to their glory years. Pistons fans act like Bill Lambeer and Dennis Rodman were out there shooting rocket launchers and stabbing people with machetes in the late 80s when they weren't. If the bad boy Pistons played in today's league, they would get demolished. Isaiah Thomas is considered an all-time great despite only having like two or three legitimately great years and being washed up before turning 30. He was also accused of sexual harassment, while fellow franchise hero in 2004 Finals MVP Chauncey Billups was accused of sexual assault. Fuck this team. Golden State Warriors. Steph Curry's legacy is built off of Kyrie getting hurt in the 2015 Finals and begging Kevin Durant to join him in the Hamptons like a little bitch after blowing a 3-1 lead in the Finals. That's also to say nothing about Zion 
Zaza deliberately injuring Kawhi in 2017 and Chris Paul's hamstrings exploding in 2018. Steph has never beaten LeBron on an even playing field and he will never be on LeBron's level all time. LeBron was the best player for all of his titles while Steph was KD's sidekick for half his rings. He finally broke through to win finals MVP on his sixth try this year and now he has the same postseason resume as Tony Parker. Big whoop. Steph did not change the game. The analytics movement did. Steph is a terrible defender no matter what anybody says and he sucks when trailing in the fourth quarter of playoff games. Thankfully for him, he's always had clutch teammates to make the pressure-filled shots for him. Steph fans think that his gravity, aka him running around in circles without the ball, makes him the second best player ever. Please fuck all the way off, you fucking dipshits. Houston Rockets. James Harden helped revitalize the franchise and at the same time is the worst superstar to ever watch play and one of the biggest chokers in NBA history. If Harden had played up to his regular season standard in the playoffs, the Rockets might have one or two more rings right now. Your team will never live down missing 27 straight threes at home in Game 7 with a chance to knock the Warriors out in 2018. Hakeem Olajuwon is beloved by everybody even though he only won two rings because MJ got suspended and he only made it past the second round four times in an 18-year career. Shaq was better. Indiana Pacers. The Pacers are always irrelevant and even in the rare times when they are good, they're boring as shit to watch. I've never heard anybody say, yo fam, put the Pacers game on. This team is always terrible offensively and pretty good defensively and they've never won anything. This team will always be known as LeBron's bitch in the postseason and their current roster is disgustingly bad. Hoosiers is one of the most overrated movies ever and Jimmy Chitwood sucked ass. Los Angeles Clippers. The biggest paper tires in the NBA for the last decade. Lob City was one of the biggest failures ever and so far the Kawhi Paul George era has been just as bad. LeBron's Lakers have gotten more hate over the last three years while winning a title than Kawhi's Clippers have gotten for not even making a finals. Kawhi has the knees of an 85 year old man and Paul George is the human version of the Atlanta Falcons. This team will always have talent and will always choke when it matters most. Steve Ballmer has the media in his pocket, but not me. Fuck the Clippers. Los Angeles Lakers. Lakers fans are the trust fund babies of the NBA. Kobe Bryant is the most overrated player in NBA history. He is constantly put in conversations with MJ and LeBron when he isn't on that level. Kobe wasn't even the best player on his own team for the majority of his rings. Congrats on watching Shaq average 35 points a game in the finals multiple times, but that doesn't make you better than LeBron. Speaking of LeBron, without him blessing this shit franchise in 2018, they would be going on a decade of losing seasons because they are run by a woman whose Twitter Abby is something you'd see on OnlyFans. It's really tough to be bad with LeBron on your team, but this shit franchise has managed to do it. Imagine how bad they'll be once LeBron leaves. Memphis Grizzlies. One of Dylan Brooks's errant shots just broke through my living room window as I said this. Thanks a lot, Dylan. For the first time in nearly three decades, this team actually has an exciting young star to build around. That's progress, but guess what? It doesn't matter. John Morant could develop into a top five point guard ever and Memphis will still never win shit because it's Memphis. Morant will always be a defensive liability and I wouldn't be surprised if he demands a trade at some point because what potential superstar player would ever want to willingly live in Memphis for the majority of their adult life? Miami Heat. Guess what Heat fans? Nobody gives a fuck about your Heat culture. We always hear about how Eric Spolstra is such a great coach and yet his offenses have almost always been below average outside of the LeBron years. Why is that? Is the he got that dog in him not a sound offensive strategy? You had a game seven at home to go back to the finals and blew it. Maybe if you didn't waste a roster spot on Udonis Haslam's corpse for the 10th straight year, you would have won. D. Wade had one great ref-aided playoff run in 2006, but after that, never did anything in the playoffs without LeBron the rest of his career. Yes, LeBron choked in the 2011 finals, but Wade was even worse in the 2011 conference finals and 2014 NBA finals. Milwaukee Bucks. If Giannis was 6'2 instead of 6'11, he would be working at Red Robin. Giannis is a monster, but despite his dominance, I still don't fear him in a half-court setting late in games because he can't shoot. Let's be real. Milwaukee's 2021 title was lucky. LeBron was hurt. Anthony Davis was hurt. Kawhi was hurt. Harden was hurt. Kyrie was hurt. If KD was one inch back, they would have lost in the second round. Giannis goes down and the team still won two crucial conference finals games without him. The Bucks are never winning another title with Giannis and maybe that's because the team takes after its co-owner Aaron Rodgers, always choking in the playoffs outside of one year. Minnesota Timberwolves. It would be a shame if you blew up your future to require Rudy Gobert. Oh, oh shit, you actually did it. What a bunch of idiots. And you didn't even trade away D'Angelo Russell, a guy who actively makes every team he plays for worse. Oh look, another protester just glued themselves to your home court. Kevin Garnett is far and away the best player this shit franchise has ever produced, but if we're being real, he was a fake tough guy and a mental midget in the playoffs. If he was truly as great as Tim Duncan like his supporters say, he would have won more than two playoff series in 12 years. New Orleans Pelicans. For a franchise that has never made it beyond the second round despite having Chris Paul and Anthony Davis at their best, Pelicans fans 
sometimes can be very arrogant. Here's a news flash: you didn't win the Anthony Davis trade, and the only way you'll ever win the Anthony Davis trade is if you win two titles with Brandon Ingram. Bragging about picks you swap from the Lakers that you haven't won a playoff series with yet is hilarious. Have some fucking shame. None of this will even matter if Zion doesn't reach his legendary potential, which at this point it looks like he most likely will not. New York Knicks. It's the Knicks. Oklahoma City Thunder. I could talk about how this franchise won zero titles with Durant, Westbrook, and Harden together, or how Kevin Durant cucked them in 2016, but those stories have been rehashed millions of times already, so let's take a different angle. The last few years, the Thunder have done the same thing the 76ers did during the Sam Hinkie era with the process, and have gotten none of the shit for it because Sam Presti is a media darling. Resting healthy players for no reason to tank and get high draft picks like Chet Holmgren and potentially Victor Wembenyama next year. Guess what? This strategy is like crypto. It sounds good and gives you false hope for the future, but inevitably ends up being a complete dud. Enjoy it, OKC fans. Orlando Magic. I followed the NBA religiously, and I completely forgot the Magic made the playoffs back-to-back -back years in 2019 and 2020. That sums up how relevant this team is. The only thing this waste of a franchise is good for is robbing everybody of a Kobe LeBron finals in 2009 and giving away all NBA big men to the Lakers at their peak. Imagine that. Losing a finals to the Lakers and giving away the two best players you ever had to the Lakers. Guess where the Lakers won their last title in 2020? That's right, Orlando. The Magic exists solely to be the Lakers' bitch. Philadelphia 76ers. Joel Embiid just flopped through my living room window as I said this. The 76ers spent an entire decade bragging about the process and for what? Really, what has it gotten them? A couple second round exits? Embiid is a fucking disgrace to watch with all his flopping and ref baiting and has consistently gotten hurt and played worse in the playoffs his entire career. He's still never played multiple playoff series in the same season without missing a game. He's the actual street clothes that people call Anthony Davis. Oh yeah, James Harden's on the team too, but he's fat and washed up, so who cares? Good luck winning with Doc Rivers as your coach. Phoenix Suns. Well, Suns fans, you had your little two-year window of being relevant, and it's gone. How ironic is it that you passed up Luka in 2018 for DeAndre Ayton, then Luka went into your house in Game 7 and dropped his nuts all over your team? Any team that employs Chris Paul will always be cursed in the playoffs. Devin Booker is extremely inconsistent and gets a little bit overrated because his fans are sexually attracted to him. You can't win a title with Booker as your best player. The last two years have shown that. I also haven't forgotten about all the shit Robert Sarver has done. Portland Trailblazers. Damian Lillard is not running from the grind. No offense to Urban Meyer. Did you know that Dame is loyal and not like other stars? What a fucking hero. In reality, Dame didn't deserve to make the NBA's 75th anniversary team. He's never played any defense, and although he has a few famous postseason buzzer beaters, his playoff career is pretty bad outside of a few series. The Blazers won't win any titles as long as he is their best player. At least Dame can say he's never been accused of rape like his head coach, though. Great job settling out of court, Chauncey. Totally innocent thing to do. Sacramento Kings. I don't think Kings fans even exist anymore, but I'll give it my best shot. Blaming the 2002 team choking away a 3-2 lead on the refs is kind of lame. Yeah, I know, it was said to be fixed, but you still had a Game 7 at home, the game was up for grabs late, and you guys didn't make the crucial shots to win. That's not the refs' fault. Don't forget, if Vlade Divac didn't swat the ball out to Robert Ori in the final seconds of Game 4, you guys would have gone up 3-1. That's not on the refs. The series was there for the taking, and you just blew it. You would have won the title that year, too, if you didn't shit your pants. Had you won it all in 2002, maybe you get over the mental hump and become a dynasty and wouldn't be going 16 years straight without making the playoffs. San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs were the model franchise for two decades, and now they devolved into shit. But that doesn't stop the media from propping up Greg Popovich, which is ironic considering he's always treated them like shit. I know everybody loves Tim Duncan, but can we at least be real about his career? The guy put up Carl's Boozer numbers offensively the last decade of his career. He never got any shit for losing or underperforming despite keeping the reputation of a superstar until the day he retired. I still don't know how he did it. If your team had made just a few more free throws in 2013, you'd have six rings right now instead of five. This might not seem like a big deal until you realize your team is never winning any rings ever again. Ray Allen, Toronto Raptors. Hey, remember when the Raptors won the NBA title not even five years ago? <laughs> Me neither. That's because the team's entire relevance depended on Kawhi Leonard staying, and once he pieced out in free agency, the Raptors went back to being forgotten. Had Kawhi stayed, the Raptors might have had another ring or two now, but I guess Canada isn't all that it's cracked up to be. Drake sucks and LeBron still owns you all. Utah Jazz. The best player in franchise history impregnated a 13-year-old, and the second best player in franchise history is a conspiracy weirdo who never scored 35 points in an NBA game despite having nearly 1,700 tries at it. Utah is also famous for being one of the most racist environments for black opposing players. It's karma that this team has never won a ring and probably never will now that they're rebuilding again. Jazz fans single-handedly made Rudy Gobert the most hated player in the league with their advanced stats that overrate the fuck out of him. The state of Utah sucks ass. And finally, the Washington Wizard. How do you trigger a fan base?
base whose team hasn't made a conference final since the 1970s. Do Wizards fans even exist? John Wall is the last legit good player this team has had, and that was six years ago. Gilbert Arenas will live on forever in NBA lore, even though he was only good for three years and is a legitimate psychopath. The Wizards are so irrelevant that people don't even want to acknowledge that Michael Jordan played for them. Much like Yamcha from Dragon Ball Z, the Wizards used to be important, but as time progressed, they've just become more and more irrelevant.